<laughs> Say hi to the camera. I love you. <laughs> I've just come back from an excellent teen dinner and I'm in a fantastic mood because we got a great victory today against the Strasbourg a really phenomenal team effort today we won by the smallest of margins and I think we are almost safe I don't want to jinx it uh, but we are now in very good shape to in our goal to battle rele relegation as for my own game I managed to draw against the international master Colombo V2 and the game was interesting. I was out of book on move three, or out of preparation at least. Um, later on, I was lucky that my exchange sacrifice actually worked because I, I just missed his move, bishop f4, and I don't have a choice but to sacrifice on e6. But it turns out the sacrifice is actually sound, and afterwards, I think it's pretty much just a draw. I have enough counterplay uh, for the exchange. So an interesting game. I haven't analyzed it in detail, too busy celebrating our great win. Um, so we'll try to keep up the good work, but today a massive, massive result for Team Vendeuvre. Just walking back uh, to the hotel after round seven, we lost the match, um, which probably on paper was normal. We didn't really stand a chance today against uh, Bois Colomb. As for me personally, I made a draw against one of my best friends uh, on and off the board, Mathilde Conju. Um, the game in itself was interesting. I tried to play a Karakan but uh, she surprised me on move two uh, by playing knight e2. So I was sort of out of preparation. Luckily, I played this line as white myself, so I have some sort of idea. I don't play it always, sometimes. Uh, and then we ended up in this position, which is sort of an advanced French, but I don't play the French either. So I basically just didn't know what was going on today. And the rest of the game, to quote, Vlad was just boring. Uh, we just maneuvered our pieces back and forth for the entire game. She was probably pressing a bit, but uh, it wasn't quite enough. Um, so I'm still on 50% doing well. There are four more rounds to go. I'm getting a bit tired. I'm um, starting wondering why I'm playing another tournament right after this, but uh, early night tonight and then back to fighting tomorrow. Day 8 in Chartres and the French League uh, is entering its final stages. I thought I'd give you some quick insight into how I prepare here in the morning. So basically the pairings come out at 10 a.m. Uh, which is four and a half hours before the game kicks off. So that uh, leaves enough time to do the specific preparation in the morning. So what I do is I get up at 10 and check out the pairings, uh, look at my opponent's games. And then you might know that I don't really have a great repertoire. So what I do uh, in tournaments like this, when I know exactly who I'm playing, I try and prepare some new lines, uh, look at some new stuff, maybe try and find some tricky variations. Because also then the game is more fun for me. And when I get to play new position, um, I enjoy that more. I try to learn something new along the way. 
And the match that's coming up for us today is quite interesting. We are playing against the title favourites, uh, Clichy. I think they've pretty much wrapped up uh, this championship already they, because they've beaten all their main rivals. But the match is uh, special because both our teams uh, are fielding two women players on, on my team, uh, Anastasia and myself. And for Team Clichy, I will be playing against Pauline Guichard, their French player. But they also have a former women's world champion, Alexandra Kostanyuk, playing. Uh, so that's a big match to look forward to. Round one, I just came back to the hotel. It was a tough day for the team, but I'm very happy uh, with my game. I managed to beat the uh, women grandmaster Pauline Gisha. I feel like I uh, got my chess mojo back at last. The game was interesting. She played a, a peace sacrifice, which I think just doesn't work. But for now, uh, we're going to have dinner and I'll show you some lines when I come back. Looking at my game against Pauline now, and I'll pick the game up on move uh, 14, where after I played uh, g4, I was expecting her to just play knight f6 immediately. It's this only square of the knight. But she, uh, when she started thinking, I realized she can take on d4. And so she did take uh, on d4, and now I pretty much just recaptured instantly after just a minute of thought. Uh, but it turns out I just have a winning move here, knight d5. And the point is, of course, I attack uh, both her knights now, the knight on b4 and on h5. And if she recaptures my knight on d5, I take with the bishop, attacking the rook on a8, and she's dropping a piece. And here the computer actually says the best move is uh, knight c6, just giving up a whole knight on h5. So that was just completely winning for me. Instead, as I said, I recaptured instantly on d4. Uh, but now um, was her last chance to go back to f6. Uh, with the knight, but still in that position, I'm just uh, white is just a bit better. Uh, so instead, she decided to try a peace sacrifice with queen h4, but turns out it's just uh, not enough. I I can take the knight, which I did, and after bishop takes uh, h3, I found the best defensive move, rook e3, and after bishop e5, I took on g6. Now bishop h2 check, king takes. Bishop g4, so I have to give up the queen, but after king g1, bishop takes d1, and knight takes d1, so I'm a, I'm a queen down, but I have three pieces, and my pieces are so well placed, especially this bishop on b3, controlling the diagonal. Um, so the game went on for another, for another what, uh, 40 moves here, but uh, I think I did a good job in converting, so very happy with that game and uh, three more games to go now and I'll try to keep up the good work. Stop the video, stop the video. <laughs> Round 9, uh, not the best of days for the team. We lost against a uh, strong Milus side. Uh, as for my game against Cecilia Sano, it was quite funny because uh, I, I didn't really expect her to go e4. And um, I played the Philidor. And on, I'll just talk about this moment with move 14. <laughs> on move 14, after. Um, Bishop f2. I briefly looked at this position in the morning, um, but uh, I here I prepared to play castles, short castles, and after rook takes f1, uh, queen c7 with some let's call it dubious compensation. But instead, in the game, I played knight c4, and once I played knight c4, I suddenly realized I had the same exact position in the European Club Cup uh, just back in October. And I couldn't, for the life of me, remember uh, my analysis from the time or my conclusions. So I knew it was the same. Um, 
but I couldn't even remember who's better or why. And it turned out afterwards that she had actually prepared it all. She took a lot of time to remember, but she had the position we had in the game uh, up until move 29 on the computer last night. Uh, so I think a lucky, lucky draw for me. I probably chose the right time to offer a draw because we're both low on time. Her king is in some trouble, but white is still better in the final position. So not my best games. Uh, I might have to drop the Philidor. <laughs> Uh, we just lost our round 10 match against Saint-Quentin, which is bad news in regards to the relegation battle, uh, but I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. Uh, as for my own game against Maria Leconte, it all started really well. Uh, I got to play the line I prepared against Mathilde Conjure a few days earlier, and I got a nice position on the board, as well as a massive time advantage. I think it was 50 minutes up on the clock. And then things started to go a bit wrong after she played Queen H5, which is not a good move. Um, and here I shouldn't have swapped queens, um, which is weird, it's not in my style. I usually like to keep queens on the board, but I saw I can take on h5 and uh, play rook e5 and win the pawn on c5. But instead, if I play queen f6, attacking b2, uh, black has a massive, a massive advantage and she would have to play 20 moves with 5 minutes on the clock. Um, so I am fairly sure I would have won. But okay, as it was, I swapped queens, played rook e5. And then I, I made a big mistake, I probably played a bit too quickly, a5 uh, followed by b5 and after she played king, e2, uh, king f2 and then king e3 suddenly re I realized my rook is just trapped on c5 and luckily I even have b4 here otherwise I could just resign um, but after b4 uh, and my rook gets chased back to b8 it's even y2 is better but probably we both can't do anything so a draw is a read. Uh, shortly after my last chance instead of playing b5 was to play rook b5 and black is still slightly better there um, but okay a missed chance um, but we will really have to win tomorrow last day It's Sunday, I'm just on my way to the playing hall for last time. Uh, it's been incredibly warm these last couple of days, somewhere around the 30 degree mark. Uh, way too hot for a month of May. So the final, uh, final round is just around the corner, we're playing in half an hour. And unfortunately we're far from safe and we don't have uh, our destiny in our own, own hands anymore. So basically what we need today is to win our own match against Montpellier, uh, which is one of the two teams that is already going down, the other one being Lisieux. But then we also need uh, Strasbourg not to beat Nice. Um, so I think first let's focus on our own games and then we can keep an eye on the other match afterwards. Walking back uh, to the hotel after the last round, we've won the match against Montpellier, so um, the first condition is uh, fulfilled. As for my own game, I was playing a, a girl who I think just started playing chess six months ago. So um, she played uh, okay for the first part of the game, but then suddenly she just uh, blundered the queen in one move, so there's not much to say about the game. But uh, yeah, on the way back to the hotel now, going to fire up the live boards and uh, keep an eager eye on the Strasbourg Nice match. So great news, uh, Nice just went four and a half up. I got myself a glass of wine in preparation when I got back to the hotel because the match was looking good for Nice uh, when we left. So it's now done. Uh, we still have one game going in our match, but it looks like we will win 7-1. 
So fantastic news, I'm very, very happy. Uh, one more year amongst the elite for Vendeur Vrechec. Tonight the closing ceremony, uh, so a lot more celebrations coming up. Just on my way to the closing ceremony, um, I thought I'd post something, well, film something now, because I heard it's an all-you-can-eat buffet and also all-you-can-drink. So um, everything I'm going to record from now there will be no guarantees of what's going to happen. So a final check-in, I'm uh, extremely happy. I think I, I had the best performance in years. So uh, all good, we managed to stay up. Very, very happy. Not the nicest view I'm giving you there. Say hello, Vovchik. <laughs> um, so yeah, closing dinner now, probably some fun footage to come up. Uh, thanks all for the support, really appreciate it. And see you soon. Come on, come on, do something crazy, Joby. Give me a glass. <laughs> oh, it's so good for you, huh? <laughs> Uh, closing dinner. I am with Fabien Lipisevsky, French grandmaster, <laughs> and Camille de Serrou. <laughs> um, the wine is flowing. Yes, blood. Where is your wine? My wine? Uh, okay, it's, <laughs> it's empty. So, okay. more is coming.